Hello. Another quantum mechanics video today, because for some reason I've been thinking about that. So, this one is about um, the Wigner's friend paradox. Um, and what it may mean for the nature of our reality, or realities, as the case may be. Um, the idea is somebody's doing an experiment where there's say a 50-50 outcome, like um, Schrodinger's cat experiment. Um, you've probably heard of it, but in summary, you stick a cat in a box, you stick a radioactive source in there which just triggers a little device which will release some poison gas and kill the cat. And it's Because it's a quantum radioactive source, it's random and you can arrange the half-life so that it's got a 50-50 chance to kill the cat in the course of the experiment. It'll mean to the cat, potentially. Um, but it's only a thought experiment. Nobody's doing it, right? At least not with cats. Um, and so you, you leave the cat in the box, you wait, <coughs> and the point is that quantum mechanics says that until you look in the box, you don't know what the outcome of the experiment is. Right, that's fair enough. Um, and it further says that there is no outcome until you look in the box. Um, so, you look in the box and you see a result. The cat is either alive or dead. And that's called the collapse of the wave function in quantum mechanics. Now, here's the idea of the Wigner's friend paradox. Wigner's going to do the experiment. I presume this is Eugene Wigner, the physicist. Um, but anyway, he's going to do this experiment, OK. But instead, he's, he wants to go to lunch, so he gets his colleague to do the experiment instead. <coughs> Fine. And he goes off. And Wigner's friend does the experiment, and then looks in the box, so the wave function collapses, and the cat is either alive or dead. Wigner's friend has a result, but Wigner is outside the room. From his point of view, the box and the cat and the apparatus and Wigner's friend are all in a superposition of states. Wigner doesn't know the outcome yet. So then he, when he goes and asks his friend what was the result of the experiment, does the wave function collapse for Wigner? So is the result determined or not? Is, is, I mean, is there a result or not before Wigner asks his friend? Quantum mechanics the maths says no. The, in fact, the maths says there is a result for the cat, <laughs> there is a result for Wigner's friend, and there is a result for Wigner, and they're all separate. There might have been a fly in the box waiting and watching to see the cat. Maybe that collapsed the wave function. You know, um, maybe the apparatus itself is an observer. We don't actually know. Nobody knows, or it is undefined in quantum mechanics, what is an observer. Um, but since everything in physical reality is a quantum system, um, from that perspective, a human is no different to an apparatus for observing an experiment. So every bit of the whole system is making observations all the time. Maybe. Um, so it might be collapsing into a zillion different realities as every particle makes its own observation, as it were. Um, a lot of people say that it, it needs consciousness to make an observation, and that may be true. Nobody knows. In which case, the cat um, and Wigner's friend and Wigner are each observers and making the wave function collapse and getting a result. Um, 
the thing is about quantum mechanics that it's not that there is a result and you don't know what it is until you look in the box. Most physicists take the view that what the maths means is there is no result. It doesn't exist until the observation is made. Now, some hard-nosed mathematical people say, no, no, it's just the maths. The maths is just telling you what you can know about the system. Um, it doesn't mean that there is no result until you look in the box. But actually, most physicists don't buy that uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, one, for example, is that the Bell's inequality experiment, the, the delayed quantum choice eraser, um, delayed choice quantum eraser experiments, and things like that, have ruled out the ideas of various types of hidden variables in quantum experiments. A hidden variable is, is the idea that stuff is going on, you just don't know what it is, basically. So when some weird quantum phenomena happens and you observe it, the idea of a hidden variable theory is that <clears throat> something that you don't know about made it happen. Um, but those theories, or, or a lot of those theories, have been ruled out. And the idea that it's just the maths telling you what you can know is kind of like a hidden variable theory as well. Um, it's saying that stuff is going on and you don't know what it is. Well, that's hidden variables in another form, really. <clears throat> so most people say, on the face of it, the maths is telling you what you can know. When you do a quantum formula, it like gives you a, a wave function, a probability function for the various outcomes of the experiment. Um, and when you look, you see one of those outcomes. Um, so the wave function collapses, as it were, into that one 100% <coughs> 100 result. Um, but the Wigner's friend paradox shows that it actually collapses separately for separate observers. And although I haven't seen this spoken about anywhere, it implies to me that they could see different results. Because, as far as Wigner's concerned, the result that his friend has seen doesn't exist yet. They're still in a superposition of states. All outcomes are still on the table, as it were. So, we could be living in a separate reality, each of us, maybe. <clears throat> Another reason physics, physicists tend to take this mass seriously, because it sounds crazy to a normal way of thinking anyway, <clears throat> is that the maths, throughout all of physics, the maths, the mathematics is really reliable. Um, throughout all of scientific history, really, when scientists come up with a theory, they put it down as a mathematical formula. And then they look at the formula, and they realise that actually it implies some other things that they didn't know about. And when they go and check, they see, oh yeah, that's true as well. That's what's called a theory is making a prediction. So, for example, um, Einstein's theory of relativity um, predicted correctly that the orbit of Mercury would not be what Newton's theory of gravity said that it should be, uh, and the orbit precesses slightly, um, and indeed it does. It also predicted the existence of black holes, which Einstein didn't know about, okay, and it was figured out later. Um, I think Stephen Hawking had a hand in that. Um, and although we haven't observed black holes directly, there's lots and lots of indirect evidence that they exist, or something very much like them. Um, so that's an example of a theory making a prediction about some other phenomenon which you don't know about. So quantum mechanics, the theory, is super accurate and has made lots and lots of predictions 
and has been used in lots and lots of practical ways. Um, the majority of electronic gadgets require quantum mechanics to work. Our brains require quantum mechanics to work um, in various ways. So, <clears throat> obviously the people coming up with the theories of quantum mechanics didn't know about all that. But when you look, you see that it's a good theory. So, the fact that it is implying that reality does not exist until observed, most physicists are inclined to take that seriously because it is another prediction of the maths. So, at the most cynical level, it's just, it's just the maths is telling you what you can know. But the normal scientific approach to that is to say, well, then that knowledge does not exist, that reality does not exist until known. Because that's what the maths is saying. And every other physics and scientific theory that's mathematically based has been like that. The maths has pointed to things and it's turned out to be true. So why should this be different? Um, we do have the problem with quantum mechanics that it doesn't define what an observer or an observation is. Is it that every single quantum particle is an observer? And does each one exist therefore in a separate reality, a separate kind of a separate universe? Or a, some kind of merged but separate universe? Or what? Well, we don't know. I don't know. And as I say, I haven't heard of anyone talking about this aspect of the implications of, of the Wigner's friend paradox. Um, but it looks like everybody collapses the wave's function separately for themselves and therefore sees their own universe. Unless we are all different aspects of one overarching consciousness. That also is not proven. <laughs> okay, but that's a, a possible way around it. Um, okay, well, what do you think? I know quantum mechanics is weird, but uh, are we all seeing different things? Is this another form of the many worlds hypothesis? I don't know. Um, it's not really like, it's, it's another many worlds hypothesis in a way. The many worlds hypothesis is that whenever a quantum event happens, it really happens in different universes uh, with different results. So the cat is alive in this universe, dead in that one. Um, that's a kind of a throwback to classical physics and hidden variables and stuff. Trying to, trying to make out that things really happen. Um, this version is much more subjective. Of course we don't know what consciousness is, we don't know if it's important, we don't know if an observer is just another quantum particle, because after all our brains are quantum systems too. What our consciousness is, of course, we don't know. That appears to be non-physical, because there's no physical theory as yet that comes up with any explanation for it. Um, there's no greenness in the brain to describe the colour green when you see it, or redness in the brain. Um, there's patterns of electrochemical activity, which is not the same thing. So that's not how explanations work usually. They usually break it down so you can see fundamentally what it is. And what we see is something which doesn't look like it at all. So. Consciousness appears to be non-physical, at least as far as physics so far is concerned. Um, and of course, well, it all ties into this weird world of quantum mechanics which we don't understand. <laughs> we can do the maths and we can do the experiments, but what it means is a tough problem for philosophy. Um, anyway, comments below and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.